Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Hello. It's Radio Redux time again. And oh boy, what a week we've decided to come back on. A week where clearly absolutely nothing happened. Oh boy. There's been lots of gaming news, lots of things that we will be discussing throughout the course of the show. And of course, there's going to be plenty of music as well. Uh, but until then, does anybody remember how we begin these? That's how it started. How it started indeed. Theme of the Ifrit Golem from Sonic and the Secret Rings. The uh, 2007 game from Sega for the Nintendo Wii is an exclusive on the first of the two storybook titles. How it started being performed by Rumblebee. who was uh, the main singer on that album, produced by Wavemaster. And only available on Sega Direct initially. Before it sort of found its way to various other platforms, including digital. Sonic and the Secret Rings is one of those soundtracks within the Sonic series that doesn't get much love, really, and I can't honestly see why. It's uh, some, some really good tracks, uh, some really quirky tracks as well. Um, definitely should be playing some more of this in the future, I think, anyway. So hello everybody, welcome to Radio Redux. Welcome back to Radio Redux, the continuation of what is now Season 9, 15 years of Radio Redux. Uh, Sonic Rexes, now LMCs, aka Last Minute Continues, video game podcast, first Sonic-related podcast that appeared on the iTunes service way, way, way back when. And now this is episode 207. My goodness me. So anyway, hi. So what do you want to talk about first then? <laughs> there's the stuff going on in America. Uh, there's the pandemic. There's uh, Sega's 60th. 
There's the fact that there's next to no video game events because of said pandemic. Uh, there's the PS5 coming up. Uh, there's the Xbox, whatever the heck they're calling it now. I can't even remember. That's how good that's going. Uh, there's the Game Gear Micro. Uh, and I look forward, incidentally, for when the pandemic eases all the lockdown stuff back and McDonald's is open so we can get it inside a Happy Meal. Then, of course, there's TSSZ, or should I say TSSZ, uh, and all the situation with that. Oh, God, like I say, we, 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 pick, we pick the week for Radio Relax to come back, didn't we? We certainly did. So, let's... Oh, boy. Let's start with the most pressing recent piece of global news. So, <sighs> so Black Lives Matter, folks. This really shouldn't be a massive news flash for you. Uh, all lives matter. Yes, we know this. It's it's kind of an obvious thing that doesn't really need repeating anywhere. You, you, you should know this, this without, without question. But we're kind of focusing on this problem that black lives matter. The Sega community, those of you listening on Radio Sega, I know are decent folk. Because the Sega community has always been, i found, a, and the Sonic community in particular, that regardless of anything that people say about the Sonic community, and by all means, they say a lot, uh, the, one of the things that has always, always been the case is how welcoming they are and how non-judgmental they are of people's, you know backgrounds and interests doesn't matter about the sexuality doesn't matter about the gender doesn't matter about um anything you know, just breaks anything along those lines at all never an issue which game here and which console you had hell yeah but not, that's another matter entirely and hardly one concerning uh, everything that's going on if you are white unsurprisingly i'm white if you are white and you are listening to this, it is your responsibility to stand up. It is your responsibility to be counted in this situation. It's your responsibility to, when you see injustice going on, it's up to you to speak up about it. Because if you don't hate, you are also part of the problem. Now, I know from audience and the fact that we've been going for, for many years, I know many of you are of an age where you're kind of settling down now. You are adults. We are now the generation who will decide what will happen to the world in the next 20 or so years. That's us. We are the rudder. We get to steer it. And part of our responsibility of being that rudder is making sure things are better. And the stuff that's been going on... Well, well the, ironically, the only good thing to come out of the last few years is to show us how little we have actually come when many of us would have been quite happy to say oh yeah it's been, things have definitely improved over the last 30 or so years well if they have they haven't improved nearly enough it's up to us to steer that it's up to us to be that voice all of us it's up to us to stop solving this systemic problem in our society and all around the world if you don't believe this is a topic even remotely related to video games or even Sega got news for you go to Sonic Rush wrapped in black it literally samples Malcolm X 
But even that, that sample, just because it sounds cool, there's no, you know, awareness or understanding of what that message meant, wholly or partially. And remember, it's also up to you, when you guys go off and have children, some of you have children now, I know. Some of you have young kids, or thinking about having kids. It's up to you to instill these values of what the world should be into them. So in 25 years time, when we're older and greyer than some of us are now, and it's their turn to steer the ship that is humanity, they make a damn better fist of it than we have been doing. And those before us have been doing. And that is all that needs to be said on the matter. At least in this show. It's kind of crazy that we live in a world where I even have to address this on a radio show about video game music. Just think about that. But think about that while we get back to said music, I think. We're going to have some more Sega. In fact, we're going to have some Burning Rangers up next with Soothing Heat.
We moved from Sega to Namco. Namco. That last track there. Unwavering Resolve from Soul Calibur 2's original soundtrack. So, next topic of discussion. There's this pandemic going on. Um, it's all the cheery topics, have you noticed? That I've got to discuss a bit. <laughs> I'll come back, Kev, as well. Um, yeah, so the pandemic. I very much hope you and yours are doing well. And, just, and more importantly, staying safe. Lockdowns for a lot of people, certainly in the UK in a minute. Lockdowns are not over yet, despite what you may think. No one is out of the woods yet with this. Trust me, I know. I work in the health sector nowadays. Oh, we got to uh, we got to keep an eye out on this. Um, if, so, interesting. I actually had a blood test the other day, uh, specifically to find out whether or not I have had, or rather, I do have the antibodies, which. In itself seems like something I should go and see a doctor for. Have you had the antibodies? We will check your blood. And they did check my blood. And it turns out that it's red and it's inside me. We, we, we guaranteed that. It wasn't a swab. It was just... You know, it was... Just this process of uh, taking a, a bit of blood from the arm of a... Uh, they ran it through whatever the departmental machine, some machine, some machine that's pretty much like a giant tongue or something, just some, it's something out of Mean Bean Machine probably, and they just <laughs> bug it in and decide <laughs> whether or not. But um, the end result is that uh, I am officially, as of ooh, a couple of days ago anyway, I am, uh, I am officially negative. Which is to say that I have definitely not had the coronavirus, COVID-19. Or I may have done, possibly, not sure, but likely not. It's it's enough to really fill you with confidence, I know. But uh, of course, there are no antibodies, so the likelihood is you've not had it. Which is a pity, because everybody I worked with was absolutely convinced that I must have had it. He's, like, he's, he's the he's guy is having to come in on public transport. He had like three months, end of last year, beginning of this year, where, you know, he's, he's been super ill. And believe me, I really was really badly ill for like three months. Respiratory stuff, really bad. <laughs> so everybody was convinced and then my co-worker then got like a similar thing for a similar time so it's just like oh, if, if anyone's had it Kevin's had it and turns out no um, but yeah please do make sure you're going out if you're going on public transport have a mask with you only the, 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 only the cloth ones you don't need any of the fancy schmancy you know, surgical masks keep those for your, you know, your, your doctors and nurses to use that's far more important uh, but if you're going on that make sure you do have a mask make sure you're listening to the government guidelines uh, and more importantly than them the you know, whatever the health department healthcare institution uh, that is uh, your local slash regional one make sure you're listening to them and their guidance on what you need to be doing because it's the only way we're going to prevent a second surge a second peak uh, and for everything to get worse again and you know just because it's sunny outside that doesn't mean it all magically went away please for everybody's sake exercise some caution and i know it's hard i know lockdown is super hard i live on my own okay uh, i have been going into work still because of what it is that i do um but i have been working from home a lot but thanks to that i have not seen my friends personally i have not seen my mum who's you know, my closest and only real sort of member of family that i have because she lives down on the south coast. I've not seen my girlfriend. I've not seen Kat for 
I've, I've not like, the the sum total of time I have seen Double Cross this year is uh, apart from apart from on a Skype call. Um, a, in physical proximity, bearing in mind that she lives about ten minutes down the road from me, I have seen her ninety seconds this year. Uh, I did initially think that I hadn't seen her at all this year until she reminded me that she dropped off a parcel to me and we literally had 90 seconds of interaction. I have not seen Double Cross properly and spent time with her for what is now six and a half, seven months. And that is hard. That is so, so so damn hard. I cannot even begin to explain how I feel inside about that. The so when I say to you, I know it's hard. It's, it's difficult to to be like this, and the fact that you're away from it. I do know. I do know. Uh, but like I say, it's you know just. I know it's. I know it's boring. You've you've got to that you've all everyone's got to that point where they've gone oh actually I can do all this stuff and now everyone's bored of doing all that stuff and people are getting less you know they're getting uh, less careful about everything they're doing and a bit bit sloppy and it's the sloppiness that will kill you it's the sloppiness that will get you in trouble it's the sloppiness that will get everybody else in trouble. Because ultimately, you're just putting yourself, you're putting yourself at risk, you're putting others at risk, you're putting your family at risk. You know, I know it's 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 fun to stick it to the man and go against what the what people are saying, but this is life and death. People are still dying in the hundreds a day because of this, and that's just in this country. It's thousands around the world, thousands. Again, all the nice topics. We'll get on to gaming in a minute, I promise you. So anyway, your Soul Calibur 2. What an absolute cracking fighting game that was. Have we actually had a Soul Calibur game since then that's been anywhere near as good as 2? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I haven't played 6 yeah, I've had six now. It did, it did come out. I feel, I feel like I imagined six coming out. Five came out, and oh my god, what a humongous disappointment it was. Um, I bought the exclusive edition, which was like the, the made it look like it was a book, like a, a proper leather bound volume type book. And you know, the disappointment when I actually played that game, it was just a mess. Look to you know, Mortal Kombat Nine as a way of doing a great passing of the torch. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 9 and 10 is a great way of you know, passing the torch over to a new generation. And even then, they've reversed it all, thanks to uh, Kronika and the Aftermath DLC. So, And funnily enough, actually, this is a very nice lead in indeed. Because right up next, we're actually going to have some Mortal Kombat 11 music. It's uh, Shang Tsung's Island Ruins stage music from Mortal Kombat 11, which of course is the uh, the uh, home game of everything uh, that comes with the Aftermath expansion. And oh boy, is, boy that's really expensive. That I mean, it's 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 absolute joyful content. In terms of all the creative friendships and um, oh my oh, oh my goodness, guys! If you haven't seen the friendship for Jax, we get Jax on the sax, baby. It is amazing. <laughs> uh, it's not ep- it's not epic sax guy. It's epic Jax guy, and it is exactly what you think it sounds like. But we've got that coming up next. After which, uh, we'll be heading over to Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the game. Another topic that's come out recently is that title. And Ubisoft acknowledging a tweet about the game. Will it come back? 
Looks like they're thinking about it, or they haven't exactly uh, forgotten. But everybody wants this game back, apparently. Everybody wants this game back. The perils of licensing, folks. First up, though, is Mortal Kombat 11. On iTunes, Spotify, and Radio Sega, you're listening to Radio Redux. Suburban Tram There by New York-based Nintendo core band Anna Managuchi. And I actually managed to say that right. Part of the soundtrack to Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, The Game, released in 2010 by Abco Music. Gotta say, not a massive fan of Scott Pilgrim. 
Um, more so specifically the movie. I felt the, the movie was, apart from the final section, which is quite entertaining, the movie's trash, man. It's It really isn't good. Uh, and there's a little bit too up its own arse in terms of references to be uh, entertaining to me, at the very least. Prior to that, of course, we had uh, Shang Tsung's Island Ruins, the stage theme. That's by uh, Matthias Wolf and from the Mortal Kombat 11 soundtrack, published by Warner Brothers' Water Tower music label. Uh, prior to MK11, Matthias Wolf also worked on Anno 1800 and Anno 2205, as well as Vikings, Wolves of Midgard, uh, Laws of the Fallen, and Sacred Free. Up next, we're heading back to the world of Sega with some more music from places you probably uh, wouldn't expect me to play, if I'm honest. Um, we've got some Sega Touring Car music up first with the track Don't Drop Me. And then we're going to have something a little bit more recent than that. Sonic Lost World and the bio drums version of Midnight Owl. And it's not the knight's kind of owl. Hoot, terrible. Those are your two tracks up next. And then we'll get on to the next part of our despairing discussion. Uh, where we will address the matter of um, the uh, disappearance of TSSZ on an apparently permanent basis. So that's that to look forward to, I guess.
Tomoya Otani there with the Bayou Drums version of Midnight Owl from Sonic Lost World's original soundtrack, Without Boundaries. Volume 3 if you're looking for it digitally. Or just disc 3 if you've got the CD. Of course, another Wave Master. One from 2013. Was it me or did that track sound a little bit like the end music from the film Puss in Boots, but just French, as opposed to Spanish flamenco. Um, yeah, d- distinct similarity with melody in quite a few places, that's, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, before that, we had uh, Sor- Sega Touring Car Championship uh, and the track Don't Drop Me by Anne Sinclair. Now, I did a bit of research on this, and all I can say is the whole situation with Anne Sinclair, and the vocalist in particular, is very confusing. Very confusing. Okay, so Anne Sinclair are some sort of group, or was. Um, the singer is actually Anne, is actually uh, Emanuela Gulbinelli, uh, who is credited as co-writer but is uncredited for the vocals and she's had an interesting life okay so so her name is Emanuela Gubinelli she has an alias she has an alias called Talisa she there's also the following aliases Angie Starr Cream Lady Gabby, Ica, Janet, Karen Rex, Licia, Maggie Sue, Mandy Gordon, Mariana Lai, Mio Tipo, Marina, Paula Marsh, and possibly Doc Dopey, Sneezy, Grumpy, and Incontinent. I don't know. It, there's, there's so many. She's been in the following groups. 8am, Aladini, Aladino? Oh dear. Annika, Anne Sinclair, of course. Uh, Axia, Bella and Blue, Koro, Dolly, Donna Luna, Jilly, Lilac, uh, Maggie May, as opposed to Maggie Sue from earlier, No Name, Ross. I'm not calling a group Ross. Ross was bad enough. Sally Rendell, Serena, Terry Gordon, Time All Stars, and Virgin. It, so she's she was born in Santa Monica. Uh, parents were Italian. And apparently, had a very strict education. Studied in a religious college, and then learned how to sing, play piano, and uh, play the violin. Uh, she was a, she was a band from the age of nine. She, as an adolescent, escaped from home, ran away, to follow her rock band for a tour in Europe. Uh, she signed a contract with a record label, uh, then broke the contract after two years because it wasn't what she wanted. Moved to Milan after all of this. Uh, wrote two songs which became hits. Restarted her own career uh, and had some success in France and various other European countries. She released a single as Emanuela, spelt differently, uh, among other things. She's contributed to all sorts of projects in Japan. And of course, you might have gathered from what you've just listened to that it was a Eurobeat track. Uh, also found on Super Eurobeat 52 that track, just so you know, in case you're interested. So, so after all that, uh, one of her singles of cover became a hit in America so she then she decided to come solo again. Which basically went into every single musical genre you can imagine. Co-wrote another hit in 1998. Uh, collaborated with Della Cruz, all manner of other things. Uh, she ended up uh, 
being wildly successful in presenting TV shows in Brazil. She then charted again in 2005 in the American charts. And the last we heard of her was in 2009 when a single was on the way. And God knows what have happened since. I, it is absolutely <laughs> bonkers. Look up her, look up her profile on uh, Discogs, guys. It is what? Where do you even start with this? <sighs> so uh, we come to the third of our triple trouble for today, uh, and that, of course, uh, is the subject of TSSZ. Now. <sighs> TSZ, 21 years in the Sega Sonic community, and it's a shame they've gone. Whether you like them all over them, and as I said on Twitter, there's a lot of people in both camps, it seems, when it comes to that site. Uh, you can't deny that they really did perform a service. Yes, they had a tendency to put their foot in their mouth on Twitter and then proceed to stick the other one up their arse on occasions, but... As somebody who has felt their investigative wrath on at least one occasion, which I don't think even Tristan realises I know about, uh, there's... (laughs) There's... um, They're the ones who actually have historically held Sega in check. They're the ones who have done... You mean everyone jokes about oh yeah investigative journalism with TSC? Yeah, they're the ones who actually did investigative journalism. Uh, they're the ones who looked into court records and stuff like that. Proper journalism stuff. Um, they reported on everything from you know uh, the things behind the scenes, uh, what's going on in terms of you know deals and licenses, uh, TV ratings for Sonic Boom. Nobody else did that. Nobody else kept track of all this stuff. Quite a lot of Sega didn't, apparently. But what we actually had with them is a site that was around for a very, very long time that was a source for a lot of other sites out there. I'm talking about sort of general video game use sites. And they got a lot of things, I don't want to say done, but they got a lot of things out there that wouldn't have got out there otherwise. And when and that's because when Sega cocked up, they would... They would be the ones that were definitely reported. And I'll I'll be honest, they didn't get that right, you know, a percentage of the time. They didn't get that right a percentage of the time. But also a percentage of the time they got it right. And now the community is in that situation where if there's something that's, you know, overtly negative, I don't see who from the websites that are out there, who's going to do it? Who's going to report on it? Who's going to, you know, chase Sega about something if a promise is broken or if something's happened, say, with the staff or anything like that? There's, in all fairness to them, do you honestly think Stadium's going to do that? Is Retro going to do that? Bits might do it. Sega Bits might do it. Thinking about it. But no one would have chased as hard as TSSC. So from that standpoint, it's a shame they're going. What's also a massive shame that they're going... Or indeed have gone at the time of recording... If, that's a, if that is indeed a definite, it's it's another great big chunk of that Sega Sonic community's history which is lost. Because all those articles, 21 years worth, basically gone. One of the things that's been bugging me 
I mean, seriously bugging me for the last six months or so, is the amount of history that is being lost. Now, Sega themselves are very cavalier with their own history. Um, a, a pro, pro, prime example, the stuff that I wrote. Uh, all the blogs. Hey, remember there was blogs? Remember there was like multiple blogs because there was stuff going on in Europe and there was stuff going on in America and, you know, I'm not going to say never the twain shall meet, but the twain, the twain met occasionally, but there was other stuff individually. And then Sega America didn't want to do blogs anymore. They didn't want, they didn't want there to be two blogs anymore because, you know, that, that's, that's, you know, no one's interested in that apparently. So instead of merging the two, they decided that after that, they just get rid of the European one and just delete it. And they get rid of the Sonic one as well, because you, you, know, you don't need that. It's, Instead of just merging in. So you then lost a whole bunch of history. And then they got rid of the blogs entirely. And you lost all of that. And then they got rid of the forums. And you've lost all of that. And you can't understand the significance of stuff. With the brand. And you can't appreciate what you have. And have achieved. And you can't. Just. You can't just wipe this shit out guys. It, it's important. Tears is the going. That's a huge chunk of history that's kind of lost to the ages now. Lost to the whims of the Wayback Machine. Some of the various authors have been working to try and save the posts, uh, and uh, LMC has been trying to help out where it can in the background. But what we've actually got now is this this gap, and you can't rely on the others too. Retro's had issues in the past where they've lost a whole bunch of data, and Stadium had they had like a. A f- not an Anna's horribilis, but a, a three month period where the, like, the serve was down and everything had gone west and they lost a whole bunch of data LMC doesn't have all the original posts that it used to from the Sonic Rex days there's a whole bunch of stuff from our early era that's 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 been lost and you just keep losing and losing and losing stuff and eventually there's this stuff that's going to disappear did TSSC cock up? Yes, they did. They absolutely did. Uh, in terms of really not reading the room, to put it mildly. Uh, and it was it was clumsy. It was very clumsy. And they know that. Without question, they know that. Was it the right decision for the site to go? It's their site. They, well, it's Tristan's site. I can do what he likes with it, ultimately. If it came back tomorrow, would that be a good thing? Honestly, no. Which is the hard bit. After so much drama over the years and so much you know, confusion and antagonization and everything else in between... Ultimately, I don't think TSSE made Tristan very happy. And you should only be doing this sort of thing if you're happy doing it. It's too much of a distraction. If it's impe- if it's impeding your life, then step away. And do something that does make you happy. Fandom is fandom is fandom. It's not. It, it's a hobby. It's it, it's. If you can make it your profession, that's great. But then you run the risk of your profession making the thing you love a chore. And who really wants that? So great shame they've gone. Probably the right decision all round for them to go. 
But what next? Who is going to step up to fill that gap? And that in itself is a problem. Anyway, since apparently the bowels of hell have opened in 2020, let's end with some Doom Eternal, why not? But hey, we can't even get away from that and controversy, because apparently the composer Mick Gordon's not happy with the audio mixing, and is not going to likely going to work with uh, ID Software again, because he's, he's, he's unhappy with it. So, wow, this year, okay. <laughs> Anyway, Doom Eternal is going to be our last track for the day. Stick around if you're listening on Radio Sega. We've got Rexy's show coming up very soon. This is Doom Hunted. And I'll see you in two weeks' time. Panicking Rexy that our show will start late since 2020. You're listening to Radio Redux.